All right. Speaking of connections uh, that I've made, I would love to introduce our special guest to address the issue of what I call the motivationless speaker. <laughs> the motivationless speaker, right? The person who says, I know exactly what I need to do, because here we are at the end of this program, knowing the path, knowing the plan, knowing exactly what we need to do, knowing what to do and doing it are very, very different things. Now I have this person who shows up and then explains it to me exactly what's really going on and the new neuroscience of this, you know, polyvagal theory of anybody, any nerds out there. Uh, and, and what what all that has, how all that relates to the moment in time when we sit down, we say, good, I got an hour. I know what to do. But I'd much rather check Facebook. <laughs> you know, I've got an hour, but uh, it's much easier and it's it's scary, right? These big goals are scary because it represents change. Uh, so here to talk about that and here to address the, what are called the can't want to's is our special guest for the day. RC Gray. We're going to chat a little bit about my experience um, becoming just so much more productive. We've documented this process and just like the 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 number of um, I, I guess dollars at the end of the day, the dollars <laughs> that are coming in uh, as a result of the activity that I'm now able uh, to do is uh, is is just transformative. So um, yeah, I guess for for everyone, you know, I was just kind of taking an attempt at describing the can't want tos. Can yes. uh, can you kind of maybe do a better job? I mean, the easiest way to describe it is the I know what I need to do, but I can't seem to get it done. It's the you know, trying to do uh all the things that you think you need to do, um, you know, all the busy work, all the the you know, I'm not really motivated to do these things, but if I do this other thing, then maybe I'll get motivated to do the things that I need to do. Um, it's the inviting in all the distractions. Like we're like, okay, I'm going to sit down and focus, but first I'm going to get myself a cup of tea and then I'm going to check my email and then Instagram, and then you're down an Instagram hole and then you're you know, or on Facebook or whatever it is. This was, this was an aha for me. I remember we sat down right here and we went on this whiteboard and we drew a bunch of uh, diagrams and shapes and you're very visual and, and can explain things. <laughs> And one of the things that you explained to me, and I think, you know, it has to do with, you know, when I set my goal, $500,000 in five months, right? Mm -hmm. um, part of me was very excited about that. And part of me was terrified about that. So yeah. which part wins? Yeah. So your brain is always going to prioritize its safety over anything else that you want. So what it's the funny, weird little thing that happens is your brain will choose a pain that it already knows versus a pleasure that it has never experienced. Um, it's just how we're wired. Um, there, uh, there are basically three rules that your brain follows. And if you are, if you don't work with your brain to follow these rules, you're, that's literally, you'll never get anything done. The biggest problem is that we feel like we have to be doing more, that we have to um, have more, be more, do more, that we're missing resources. We we think that these are issues either outside of us or that it's us, that we're fundamentally broken, that we're not good enough. We're not smart enough. Maybe we're not focused enough, don't have enough motivation. Um, but the real problem is you do have all of these things. You Your brain makes its own fuel. It makes its own motivation. The issue is that you just don't have access inside the brain to these things. And your brain works at, and Tim and I debate these numbers, and we can both find sources to, <laughs> we can both find sources to support ours, but um, somewhere between 11 million and 200 million bits of information per second. And that is your subconscious mind is your brain. That's the, you know, how we would link the two. Um, but your mind, you yourself can handle about 40 to 50 bits of information. So if you want to think of the, the speed difference in that is think of your subconscious mind or your brain as working at light speed and you are riding a bicycle. Yeah. And so in my, in my case, you know, what you, what you kind of showed me and taught me was that when I set this goal and began focusing on this goal and, and making even progress towards this goal, um, my, my brain is sitting back on, oh yeah. Like you want to make a change, like when we set New Year's resolutions, right? It's like our conscious yes. mind is like, we're really going to do this. And your subconscious mind is like, all right, well, let me know on January 2nd in mid afternoon when you quit, like how it really is going to be. <laughs> and, it, you know, it's, it's not a fair fight. The goal, right? And I think, I think what we need to be able to do 
is tap into that. Re- basically work with your brain instead of trying to work against your brain. And what, yeah. setting a big goal, doing something new in a way is trying to go against what your brain wants. Yeah. Hundred percent truth. Hundred percent. Anything that is new um, and is growth, and we need growth. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, it's it's fundamentally important for us, um, but uh, our our brain wants it also, uh, but it doesn't want it first. And that's mm. kind of that kind of brings me to uh, these rules. So your brain has three main objectives, um, and it's always going to do them in this order. It ha- these are unbreakable rules. It will always follow these rules. Um, and rule number one is no dying. So first and foremost, your brain will always prioritize your safety um, over anything else. Even if that other thing, even if prioritizing your safety doesn't feel good, it will, anything that is perceived as a threat, it's going to protect you from. Um, So it'll choose, like I said before, it's going to choose a pain. uh, It'll choose a pain that it knows rather than pleasure. That sounds good, but is new. Um, And this absolutely includes your goals and especially any of these goals that you have that you've also attached fear to. And Tim and I have discussed this and I know it's a pretty vulnerable thing, Um, but um, anytime that you have something new that you can list a pros and cons list. And if you have any fear attached to even the positive outcome, that that starts a snowball effect of this trigger in your brain of fear. Fear is bad. Fear is unsafe. So I will, I will uh, chime in here, RC. Yeah. One of the, one of the uh, fears that is associated, like when I say, all right, $500,000, that means a lot more speaking contracts, right? That means um, ultimately that means more flying and my brain experiences flying. <laughs> I'm not a happy flyer. Like I don't enjoy <laughs> the flying process. So something as stupid as that, can hold you back from, you know, a huge, you know, because again, achieving a goal has positive associations to it. Yeah. Also but, has negative associations to it. Sure. Right. Does. If I'm going to be thin and healthy, then that means I can't have my cake anymore. Right. And your brain weighs those. And as you said, prioritizes certainly the safety uh, first and, and safety is sometimes not always uh, logical, right? Flying a plane is super safe compared to driving in a car, right? It could tell my brain that all day long, but yeah, still, yeah. I'm still not going to enjoy the process. So I think, well, I think there was some self-sabotaging going on. A hundred percent. Almost every single, um, you know, issue when we talk about focus and motivation, it's always self-sabotage. Um, and it's self-sabotage, but it's our brain keeping us safe. So it's a sort of, you know, weird, um, uh, catch 22. I'm sorry. I have a German shepherd trying to climb in my lap right now. You're adorable. Go. <laughs> I don't know if you saw those giant ears. All right. Um, so yeah. And the thing is your brain lives right here in this moment. So when you feel fear about something you're imagining in the future, your brain is experiencing that right here and right now. So it's preventing you from taking even the tiniest step or action because you have a feeling about something that hasn't even happened yet. I want to move on to what the next rule is and why your brain, like why you can't want to. Um, And it's after your brain feels safe and feels secure and has all of its, all the things buttoned up and it's regulated and on, you know, on par showing up where it needs to. uh, Then rule number two is no crying. (laughs) And that means that once your brain feels safe, then it can work on making you feel good. And the biggest mistake that most people make is they are focused on trying to feel better when um, they need to be focused on doing better. And you can't talk about focus without talking about motivation and, or vice versa. You can't talk about motivation without talking about focus. But um, the truth is that we think that motivation is a feeling problem when it's actually a doing problem. And we're just doing the wrong things. Say that again, Um, please. (laughs) <laughs> motivation is not a feeling problem. It is a doing problem. And the problem is we are focused on doing the wrong things. We are focused on trying to do more, have more, be more. And we believe that it is us. We feel bad thinking that we're not smart enough. We're not good enough. We're not motivated enough, we're not talented enough. A fill in the blanks, right? All the blanks that every single person has that little voice in their head that says, yeah, but I can't because the yeah, buts, right. All the, I'm not good enough. The imposter syndrome, everybody's got it. Um, 
So this is deeper yeah. than like the fear of like, oh, what if they say no? This is fear of what if they say yes? Yeah. And, and that, I, and that was like revolutionary, you know, understanding for me is, is like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I have this fear of success in a way because it comes with, you know, the, the, my, my I, and I didn't understand why my, my, my brain sort of was like, mm, like, uh, I don't, and, and it just, and it's it's the boss, so it just took over and didn't it self sabotage, right? This it, it it manifests as the know what to do. Why aren't I doing it? I've given myself every opportunity. I've tried planning. I've tried productivity books and new schedules. I've tried this. I've tried that, and yet all I, I know, like I know, I have to reach out to prospects. But when I sit down to write that email, <laughs> like something it. stops me, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so breaking through those. And, and, you know, we haven't really talked about how to break through those yet, but clearing those Look and checking those boxes, right? Letting your yeah. brain have a feeling of, of energy and excitement. And that when, and here's what I found, RC, when you helped me do that, energy is not the issue. Time is not the issue. Your brain, um, Valerie, I got this from you, I believe, when it comes to the voice as a machine, like people, some singers say like, you don't want to wear your voice out. You're like, no, it's a machine. Just put more gas in or just, you know, like, <laughs> like it can go forever. Your car doesn't get tired. It runs yeah. out of gas, but it doesn't get tired. Right. So, and our brains make their own fuel. That's the major misconception about motivation is that motivation, you don't get motivated to take action. Motivation comes from action. And, but then we're all like, okay, but I'm trying to take action and I can't do it. Well, the action comes from inspiration. And this is what's crazy is our inspiration is our goal. And your brain is going to do one of two things. It's either going to like what it hears and move towards that goal, or it's going to be inspired and fearful of that goal and move away from it. And that's why rule number one is new, no dying in that if it is afraid of that new goal in some way, and it, it may not be a conscious fear, we have conscious fears and unconscious fears it will prevent you from moving toward that goal always. Um, so, you know, we've got this situation now where the brain feels safe and then rule number two, no crying. So basically the brain also wants to feel good. And you've kind of explained some of the, the <laughs> nuance of that. Yes. Um, then we've got this third goal, this third yes. goal that we think is our first goal. Yes, this is the fundamental problem. So rule number three is no dying again. And that's because if you're not growing, you're dying. And the biggest problem, the reason why you can't achieve your goals is because you're chasing your goals. Super catch 22, but it's because you are focused most often, most people do this. They think that um, they, I guess the best way to put it is like, we're taught that if you achieve your goals, if you get the house, the new car, um, you know, have more money, more success, then at that point, you'll be happy. And at that point, you'll feel safe and secure. But the problem is that you can't have those things. <laughs> you can't get those things unless your brain feels safe and secure. So um, Tim and I have this little phrase that we've coined that we kind of throw back and forth at each other. And it's uh, happy first, then rich. And it's the reminder that you you can't grow unless you feel both safe. And I use the word happy, um, no crying, but it's an emotionally regulated state is what it means. Um, and, um, there's a lot of psychology and also neuroscience behind that. And so we, we, um, you know, we, we're trying to do more. We're constantly trying to chase that next goal. And that leads us right back into that cycle of trying to do more, have more, be more. And we burn ourselves out because we believe that that is going to solve our problems when in fact, it's just perpetuating the problems. Yeah. I, I think, I think those, those three priorities was a, such a, a shift for me. And cause I believed it. I'm like, no, once I get that thing, then that feeling that I have, that anxiety, that whatever it is would go away. There's a reason why um, most of us get stuck once we have all the information we need to complete the goal that we want. And it's because essentially there are three stages of growth. And the first stage is knowing what you want. You have to know the thing that you want. You have to know the outcome and where you're going. And there's a huge distinction between knowing where you want to go versus knowing what you want to get away from. And if all you know is you want to get 
out of pain. And if the pain is the reason you're chasing that future goal, you're anchored to pain. You're looking behind you the whole time. So you need to know where it is you're going and, and get out of pain is not a goal. And the step, the second step to this growth is knowing the solution to the problem. So once you are able to get the information that you need, right, you go, you take a course, you're taught this information, um, you are looking at solutions to the problems you have, but also the steps to attain that. Um, you're thinking about different ideas and things like that. But this is where most people get so excited because they just want to consume all this information. They think that's the solution that they need. And about 99% of people, uh, you know, unstatistical average there, I don't know, I don't know the actual statistics, but really in my experience, most people, this is exactly where they get stuck. They know what they want. They finally figure out what they want. And it feels great to be like, yeah, I want that thing. I know the thing I want. I know exactly what I want. I'm going to go hire a coach or a person. And they're going to teach me all the things I need to know. And it's going to be magical. And I'm just going to be like, poof, I'm there. And then they stop. This is where they end up with the um, gathering all the information and they are not taking action because they got all the dopamine hit of like the new information and that's exciting and it's fun. And that's the exact moment of the, I know what I need to do, but I'm not doing it. So the step three in any type of growth is actually the taking action part. And I know it's total catch 22 because we have the whole issue of the, I know what I need to do, but I can't get it done. <laughs> and so this is, this is where people bounce back and forth. They take a little bit of action and they fall back into a whole slew of self-doubt. And like I said, that imposter syndrome, where we think that we don't have, we need more resources, right? And that's our mind talking, trying to make rational sense of what our brain is doing. And our brain is going, you, I just don't feel safe. I do want to, I do want to mention, uh, we do have uh 130 coming up and uh, I am going to stay, uh, RC, I don't know what your time responsibility is. I know I, 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 I said 130 is sort of our typical end time. And if anybody else has a hard end time and you've got to go, then you've got to go. But RC, I do want to mention, uh, that you're, we we wanted to to share this and with the group because again, sort of fixed me magically. I'm like, let's let's. But Stop again, <laughs> your 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 coaching, your one on one coach, that's expensive, and they've already just done this yeah. whole thing. So yeah. what worked out fortuitously is you've got this like workshop thing coming up. I did. I created a workshop. Uh, it's called Focused AF. Um, and it basically breaks down. Um, it's a one week long. It's seven days long. It's intensive, like you dive in and it's just about, it's about teaching you how to work with your brain 